the forward pass has had a slow evolution in football, uh, especially college football, and especially Michigan football. Uh, it's taken a while for the University of Michigan to evolve in that position. You got to remember, though, Michigan is in a great place. Every position is deep most years. Stars are everywhere, uh, except at quarterback throughout history. Michigan has never really been about the quarterback. Historically, they have been about the team and how it can be the best it can be. Uh, but this video is all about the quarterback. And that the quarterbacks that have been through Michigan, the ones that are, have been drafted, 26 of them. The first draft was in 1936. Our first drafted quarterback was in 1941. Okay, so um, the, since then, uh, since the first quarterback we've had drafted, four of them actually won a national title for Michigan. Uh that leaves eight others for the the prior era of college football uh, going back to, well, the 1909, I believe, is the first recorded pass is what they're saying out there on the Internet. Um, and we never really did that. So we won by the two platoon system that we invented here at Michigan and ground and pound defense, that type of play is always what we've been, even up until this day when JJ McCarthy went first round 10th overall and won a national title. So we're not going to change that, but here we go. This is the history. It's how it has evolved here at Michigan. Like I said, 1941 was the first drafted quarterback, Forrest Evashevsky. And he was in the first round, 10th overall, just like J.J. McCarthy. So we have bookends there. Uh, what? 100 and how many years later? 75 years later? 73 years later. Anyway. <laughs> um, all, he, Forrest was an all-big uh, 10 selection, three seasons. He was a blocker. So... These quarterbacks, they ran, they punted, they kicked, they uh, returned punts. They did it all back in the day, and Forrest was an, uh, known as an amazing blocker. <laughs> so at quarterback, yes. Uh, Tom Harmon is not going to be mentioned. He is listed actually as a running back that threw the ball. So different era back then at Michigan, but he went first round. In 1943, George Seatham. Seathamal went in the third round, uh, 19th overall. He had a record of 13, 4, and 1 when starting at quarterback. In 1946, Joseph Ponsetto was drafted 8th round, 63rd overall. Was he denied by the Steelers, or did he deny the Steelers? Uh, because he was drafted again the very next year, so apparently he came back. Uh, you could do that back then in 1947. And Joseph did, and he, he probably should have went the first time because he was drafted in the 21st round. Yes, way back then they had 21 rounds. Uh, he was 194th overall, so there weren't as many teams. Um, he ended up with the Giants, and uh, he had a 15-5 and five record at Michigan. Now this is all kind of post-World War II here. Uh, leading into kind of Detroit's, the Detroit Lions um, era, where they were great in the 50s and 60s, and uh, Michigan kind of was too. All right, 1948, Pete Elliott was the guy who was drafted 15th round, 127th overall, but he won the national title a year before, and he had 12 varsity letters in, I believe, four different sports. So, or three different sports, four-year Littleman and three different sports. However you want to say it, he was an amazing athlete. That's what they were back then. 1955, Duncan McDonald came along. He was drafted uh, 26th round, 312th overall. He started all four years. I don't know if that means he started as a true freshman or he uh, sat his freshman year and was a redshirt senior when he started his fourth game uh, season, but what an athlete there. And then in 1958, Jim Van Pelt 
was in a, drafted in the fifth round, 54th overall, another great athlete. 1959, Bob Pacek, eighth round, 87th overall. During the 50s and 60s, Michigan wasn't up to par, and the quarterback was not up to par as well. So uh, not many people here in the 60s. Uh, Bob Timberlake is the only one. In the 1965 draft, he was taken in the third round, 33rd overall. He was an All-American. He won the Big Ten and the Rose Bowl. And uh, he's the last all-around player that Michigan had who punted, kicked, uh, played defense, all of those things. He's basically the last guy because then in the 70s that happened with uh, uh, Don Moorhead, 1947. More of a true, what you would say, a modern-day type quarterback went in the sixth round from Michigan. 132nd overall, he had a 17-4 a and four record. He set 24 records at Michigan at that time. And then three years later, 1974, Larry Kippa, Kippa Saipa, was in the 15th round, uh, 373rd overall, uh, 15th round. You know, that kind of says a lot. We don't really have all these great quarterbacks that you can look back at. Um, as a Michigan University, and that's because of, like I said, the philosophy that we have, and it's it won. It, it's still winning to this day. Um, in 1979, five years after Larry, Rick Leach was drafted in the fifth round, 132nd overall. He started four years. He was uh, won three Big Ten titles. Uh, he had a 25-8 and eight record, and it's rare that the quarterback – as a true passer at Michigan. That's, and that's what we had after that. Steve Smith as well, 1984, five years after Rick Leach. Went in the second round, 33 overall. He was the one that had the 25 and eight record. So it's rare that Michigan really has just a true pure elite passer that can run the ball too. Uh, enter Jim Harbaugh, 1987. He entered the draft in the first round from Michigan, 26th overall. And Bo once said about him, he's coming along pretty well. <laughs> That's how we cared about quarterbacks. Uh, yeah, he's coming along. Uh, Elvis Gerbach was after him in 1993 in the eighth round, 219th overall. And passing really came along during this time with Elvis uh, and Desmond Howard on the other end. 71 passing touchdowns was a record uh, for a career there at Michigan. And then Todd Collins in 1995 went in the second round, uh, 45th overall. He holds the career record of completion percentage here at Michigan with 64.28%. Um, which other programs have just obliterated that that number. And, and J.J. came pretty close, but that is a career uh, percentage. Now, 1998, Brian Greasy went third round, 91st overall. He just won a national championship for Michigan with the likes of uh, the first ever and only ever defensive Heisman winner in Charles Woodson on defense. He had a great team all surrounding him. And he was the best game manager in the nation. So then in 2000, Tom Brady, the greatest uh, game manager in the NFL ever, <laughs> uh, was drafted in the sixth round, 199th overall. So it didn't do much. See, that's that's why I think Michigan really just don't <laughs> utilize the quarterback. They know that they would have to change up their whole entire identity if they started letting some guy sling it around. They didn't even let Tom Brady do it. So they don't let any, anyone do it. They didn't let Drew Henson do it. Chad Henney slung it around a little bit. We're getting to him. but So in 2003, Drew Henson, as I said, uh, he, he has an asterisk here because I think he – didn't he go to the NFL from somebody else or did he go to the NFL from Michigan? But he went in the sixth round, 192nd overall. He competed with Brady, but had injuries. So uh, 
And then he eventually decided on baseball instead. And then, like I said, the very next year, John Navarre, yeah, he went, so he didn't graduate because John Navarre played a few years, three years at Michigan. Anyway, uh, 2004, he was drafted. Uh, seventh round, 202nd overall. Still has the most passes in a season with 456. So they let that guy sling it around. And then Chad Henney was in 2008 when he was drafted. Second round, 57th overall. First freshman starter since, I think, Duncan McDonald or... You, know, you correct me if I'm wrong, maybe he is the first true starter at quarterback there. It seems to me I remember when he was coming out, I hear some I first freshman, first freshman since forever. And he four years at Michigan and uh eventually won a Super Bowl for Kansas City backing up for uh Mahomes. Well won a playoff game anyway for them. So yeah, between him and Jake Rudock is what I call the dark ages at Michigan where they did not have the team. But they did have a couple of quarterbacks. Between Henny and Rudock, Denard Robinson was there, and uh, Devin Gardner was there. But the team sucked, uh, for better lack of terms. So, enter Jim Harbaugh, and Jake Rudock was his first quarterback. And it would be a while until he got his next. Uh, in 2016, Jake Rudock went in the sixth round. We had him for one year, a transfer from Iowa. 191st overall is what he went. Had great stats, over 3,000 passing, only the first or second player. Was the first or second player to do that in one season? Uh, like I said, a long time until J.J. McCarthy, though, in 2024 when he was just drafted in the first round, 10th overall to Minnesota. He had just won a national championship. So there you go. Uh, Looking forward, how does Alex Orgy, Denegal, Davis, Warren, and any other quarterback fit into uh, who's going to be the next one drafted? Because they're far and few between here from Michigan. <laughs> so which one is going to be the guy to lift us, get drafted, and win a national title? Or, more importantly, which one can get Michigan to a national title without getting drafted the same year? Because that has not happened since 1948. So there you go. Will we rely on the quarterback more? Will we trust George RG with his legs? What do you think the, the philosophy should be? Or should we just stay pat? And we're going to run our system. Maybe the quarterback seems to me like we're more uh, um, likely to allow a quarterback to show what he can do. Nowadays, in the modern era, uh, with J.J., we allowed him to actually drop back and sling some balls in the playoffs. So we'll see uh, how they address this going forward. But there you go, brief history of Michigan's quarterback situation. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Like the video. Comment down below what you think. And uh, subscribe if you have not. Share with other people if you have subscribed. And go Blue, everybody. Thank you.